Now we can look at some of the ways that you can actually manipulate that impulse response and make it more unique to your specific project. First, let's look at this section of three knobs here that are known as the impulse response parameters. Pre-delay should be a concept already kind of familiar to you. That's the amount of time that your reverb is actually offset. So the amount of time it takes for your reverb to actually come in. I have it synced up to the tempo of my song. So you can do that by clicking this eighth note symbol here. You can unclick it to set your pre-delay in milliseconds. However, if you're wanting this to not muddle up your rhythm, if it's an instrument that matters a lot to your rhythm, you might want to sync this up so that it's not throwing any of that off. And my piano is a very key component to my rhythm section here. Since I'm in a medium sized room, I do want to think about where I set this pre-delay. I don't want it to take too long. Okay, that would be more characteristic of a larger room. Uh, and I don't want it to be immediate because then I would be in a very close space like a recording booth or something uh, where there's not going to be a lot of time for those reflections to get back to me. Even though I'm set on a 64th note value, Let's go ahead and play back some different pre-delay times uh, just so you can understand what difference it's going to make. The length here has everything to do with your actual audio file up here, your impulse response. There is a max length that you can have here and it's listed right next to the IR file name here. So you can see that the full file is 1.4 seconds long. I've actually shortened my value to one second here, uh, which I believe matches a half note at my BPM, which is 120. If you see though, if I lengthen this again, you'll see the audio file change in the display window. Let's play back some different lengths of this impulse response file, uh, just so you can get a feel for how it's going to affect the sound. You might not be able to notice much of a difference with this soloed out, uh, but a lot of the times you can really tell if it doesn't really match uh, your divisions neatly uh, in respect to your tempo. You can kind of have that lagging feeling that a reverb gives you. Uh, so that's why I made sure to match this length to my half note speed. Just to be clear about shortening the length, what you're doing is you're cutting the tail end away from that impulse response file. You are in no way time stretching this file or uh, time crunching it. The size, however, is a different story. It is actually going to involve a time stretch or time crunch effect. Uh, so we're going to expand this up to 1000% size. And uh, not only are you gonna see the file actually stretch itself and therefore last a lot longer, those reflections are gonna last a lot longer, you're also gonna be changing that length uh, along with some other parameters within the plugin. So we're gonna change the size to 1000% and you're gonna see the length is gonna change along with it. <laughs> 